Nate Reach, Para Athletics. You know, for me, it's motivation is easy. Like I just love training. Uh, I don't love the regular season racing. I love the championship racing for sure. Um, but I just love getting up and testing my limits. I didn't get in the sport to break world records. I got to see where my limit was, and I wanted to test that as much as I could, and that's still what I'm doing, and I still haven't found that limit yet, or at least I hope I haven't. Um, so uh, that's, that's, that's really what my big goal is. Uh, when I was in Dubai, uh, I tried a new strategy where I just sat for 1,200 meters and really exploded at the end, and uh, the guy who I raced got second at, at the Paralympics, and. We don't necessarily love each other, so it was uh, it was really good competition. I love the mental game. I mean, I definitely in the call room is really <laughs> where it starts. I definitely like to uh, to play some games in there for sure, and I just like to get any edge that I can, um, you know, because I I mean, you get nervous when there's someone faster than you in the race, and I learned that in, in able body, and I really had to conquer that fear. I got really nervous for for races, and so I think that set me up really well, and I definitely use every advantage I have. A lot of my family members who are big influences. My mom was Canadian national champion in the pole vault. Uh, my stepdad played professional baseball for the Giants and was uh, roommates with Aaron Boone in college, who's now the, the Yankees manager. Uh, my grandpa, Jim, Jim Harrison, who every Canadian always wants to talk to me about, who played with Wayne Gretzky and Bobby Orr and scored 10 points in one game and uh, three goals in 24 seconds. And so he's, he's someone who is, everyone's like, oh, I know Jimmy. And I'm like, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. Um, so, and then, you know, on the professional scene, uh, Blake Griffin has been someone who's kind of taken me under his wing. Uh, my, my uncle is his therapist. And so it's been really cool the, the, the time he's taken with me. Um, I recently saw him in Boston before I ran my fast mile, and he actually wrote a letter to me in Tokyo, which was uh, made me laugh. And I've been working with my uncle on the human movement side, getting some of my certifications so that I can start uh, helping other athletes. And I think a lot of the Paralympic athletes uh, don't get the top-notch treatment, and that's not necessarily anyone's fault. I just I just don't think they have access to that, or they or they don't uh, l learn more about it. So I'm hoping to um, you know show that because I haven't been injured and. In, five years and I'm one of the few athletes who has been healthy. I think it's important for me to spread the word because I look back at that 10 year old kid who was super insecure, who got made fun of every time he read out loud in class because he stuttered and stammered, who dropped his lunch every day because his right arm didn't work, who just looked different and was different. Um, and sports gave me that confidence. And at some point I decided to bet on myself and that's when all of a sudden I started running really well and you know for a long time that was my identity now it's something that I do it's not who I am but um, and I want other kids to other athletes to uh, feel that.